I've been a Nikon user for forever, but for the last few weeks, I've been shooting almost every client session I've had exclusively with this Canon EOS R6. Watch this video to find out if I'll be making the switch or if I'll be sticking with my Nikon Z6 II. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Scott Lawrence, a headshot and portrait photographer based here in Detroit. For the best headshot tips and occasional gear commentary, please subscribe and ring that bell so you'll be notified when new videos are released. As a full-time headshot photographer, I'm shooting just about every day. So the little differences or annoyances in a camera system really add up. Switching camera systems is not a simple task. It's expensive for one. It requires building a lot of new muscle memory and getting rid of the old instincts. And the odds are it's actually not going to make me any more money and clients really aren't interested in which camera system you're using. That said, as photographers and artists, we all have our favorite gear. So let's find out if this Canon RF system is all that it's cracked up to be. This review is meant to be a compilation of my thoughts and observations around the Canon RF system as compared to the Nikon Z system. It's from my perspective as a working headshot and portrait photographer. I'll try to keep it as non-technical as possible. There are tons of reviews that go into excruciating detail on all the aspects of all these cameras and lenses. So I'm just gonna tell you about my thoughts and experiences in just functionally using the camera as a portrait photographer. Let's start with the autofocus. The hype around Canon's autofocus system is what piqued my interest in even trying the RF6 in the first place. And that's the one thing that's really been driving me nuts on the Nikon Z system. I just had too many autofocus shots. My little portrait studio here is not a difficult shooting environment. I can tell you that the Canon autofocus and eye tracking system is for real. After a shoot now, I no longer need to do a quick focus check of my proofs. I can just send them on off to my clients. It's that good. Even at 2.8, the eye tracking is pretty darn good. On the Nikon system, I wouldn't even shoot at 2.8 in the studio just because I knew there was gonna be too many out of focus images, which again, professional 2.8 lens on a professional body, I don't really think that should be happening, but here we are. And on the Canon RF 50 1.2 lens, I don't know what they're doing there, but the results are amazing. It somehow magically grabs the closer eye and it's in focus just about every time. It's pretty amazing. Okay, let's talk about the overall body design and menu systems of each system. The Canon R6 feels a lot bigger in the hands relative to the Z system. I've noticed that with the 24 to 105 on the camera, the lens is a lot more front heavy than the 24 to 70 equivalent on the Nikon system. It's not a big deal, but it's just a noticeable ergonomic difference. When on a tripod, which is something I'm using a lot as a portrait headshot photographer, um, I notice that there's always a little more play um, when the tripod mount is on there. It's not a deal breaker, um, but it seems to be a lot more solid on the Nikon. I think this is because there's a little more plastic in the Canon body. The Z bodies are a little more, um, I think they're fully metallic. Um, now maybe this is different in the R5. If you have one and you can speak to this, let me know in the comments. And then you've got the flip out viewfinder. This is a bigger difference than I thought it would be originally. I, originally I thought it was just, hey, it's just one flips one way, the other tilts the other way. Not a big deal. But it's a bit different to get used to. As a still photographer, I think the flipping and tilt, or the Tilting screen is better as a still photographer because you can get higher or lower depending on your relative position to the subject. Um, with the Canon, to do the same thing, you've got to flip the viewfinder out and you're, you know, you're looking off to the side. So it's not quite as seamless of an experience, I think, on the, um, on the Canon as it is on the, the Z system. But again, that's a largely personal preference and something you have to kind of experiment for yourself. I do think the flip out screen is going to be better and it's pretty established that it's better for video um, as you have a built in video monitor that you can use for YouTube videos like this. Much like Nikon, the Canon menus are very easy to kind of figure out, get a hang of for yourself. There's a good amount of customization and um, tangible or physical buttons um, all over the camera, so there's lots of opportunity to set things up just how you want them. If you're an experienced photographer, you're gonna be able to pick up the menu system pretty easily. Onto the lenses now. 
780-200 is a staple in my bag, and I thought it was important to kind of weigh those lenses in conjunction with the bodies. So the Canon lens is quite a bit more compact, as you can see. Now this is fully kind of compact in its uh, travel form. Once you unlock it, so at full reach, about the same extended, but definitely a lot more compact in the bag, which makes a difference. I always thought that the internal focus design of the older 7200s and the current Nikon 7200 takes a lot more space than it should. Setting aside the autofocus difference, the lenses are great. So if you're gonna pick at those differences, I think you're gonna be hard pressed to find a really meaningful difference. I think it comes down to design and kind of just workflow characteristics of things that you like in the lens. Both systems do have this control ring. So the Canon's is here and the Nikon's is on the kind of in the mid point of the body. Um, on the Nikon system, I never really use that control ring. So, you know, you can change, you can set it to change different exposure settings, that sort of thing. I always thought it was too easy to bump on the Nikon system, so I never really used it. The Canon system, however, works a little bit differently. The ring itself has a little bit more of a click feel, so it's not making noise, but you can feel like a little tactile click. Uh, so that in and of itself makes it a little less easy to bump. And then by default, the way it works in the, the camera system is that you've got to half press the shutter button and then rotate the ring to get whatever function um, you have it set to to change. So you could set this to ISO or white balance or something like that. Um, so I do think it's a little more functional and certainly more usable on the Canons. If you do use a tripod, I think you're going to be interested to see the differences in the tripod collar. So I do have this mount on here. Ignore that. The way the Canon mount works is that it's actually like a strap almost, or a metal strap that grabs the lens and it goes like that. And then it does allow some rotation of the lens. Before working with the Canon version, I thought it just looked cooler, but after using it in practice, I find it's kind of clunky. Very easy, I found that once you start rotating it for this to pop out, and that would of course cause the lens to fall. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here, but it just seems less secure. The Nikon system works by unscrewing this lever, or unscrewing this knob, and then you can freely spin the lens and the camera body while on the tripod, and it's very secure. There's no risk of it falling off. If you don't want the collar on, you just unscrew that a little bit and take the mount off, and then I just rotate this around so that it's not in the way of my hands when I'm hand holding. By far, the Nikon design is a lot more effective, I think, and just more secure. A couple other lens notes. As I mentioned, the 24 to 105 is a little front heavy when mounted on the body. The lens itself is really nice. I do, and I've always kind of envied that 24 to 105 range that is a little more standard on the Canons, especially as a portrait and headshot photographer that range from 70 to 105 is key for me. I mean, that's the difference between really being able to do a job with one lens versus needing maybe two or even three lenses. In a pinch, I could probably run my whole business with the 24 to 105 lens, which is good to know. As I mentioned before, the, the 51.2 lens for the RF system is just amazing. I don't know what Canon's done, but they certainly figured something out there. My only gripe, if I had to pick something, is that the focus motors are a little loud. You can kind of hear it hunt a little bit sometimes. Not ideal for video, I would say, but as a still photography lens, it's amazing. Now I've also tried the Canon RF 35 1.8 macro lens. The little time that I have spent with it, I thought it was pretty good. The macro abilities are pretty cool too. This is a nice little addition to this lens. So surprisingly useful when you think about it. It's not gonna be a true portrait lens, but for a lot of other kind of practical walking around capabilities, it's pretty strong. Wi-Fi capabilities. Big surprise here, I found that if you use the Eero base stations or, or mesh base station systems, so it's really the, it's the mesh Wi-Fi system, that doesn't work with the um, Canon system for whatever reason. I called Canon to confirm this. 
Um, I was a little dumbfounded when they told me. Um, seems like a really big miss. Hopefully it's a firmware thing and they can get this sorted out in the field or if you know if you're away from a, a networking hotspot, the, the setup works pretty good. You can pretty seamlessly transfer things um, back and forth when I'm home or in my studio here, which both of which use the, the Eero uh, mesh networking systems. No luck. If you're aware of a fix or something that I'm missing here, let me know. Uh, tethering. I'm starting to tether more and more for um, a lot of my corporate shoots. It gives the client a better experience. Um, they can quickly see the, um, the options and pick their favorites right there in person. You don't have to go chasing them around after the fact. Canon's EOS camera control utility is very similar to the Nikon camera control app. Both allow tethered transfer to a computer, um, and then you can use um, a software of choice. I use Lightroom to pick up uh, basically your tethering to a hot folder. So as it sees images that come through on the folder, um, it brings those into Lightroom. I do think Canon's software is faster to connect to the camera, and it just feels a little more robust. Um, Nikon's version seemed a little finicky. Um, it's always a question of what you have to connect first and what you turn on the camera. Just just a little bit more finicky. Both programs do let you tether to a computer and save to a card. I think this is pretty important for professional work. Lightroom color profiles. For some reason, Adobe doesn't have camera profiles for the R5 and the R6 the same way they have for the Z6 and Z7. I'm not sure if this is a Canon or Adobe thing, but it seems kind of like a big miss. If you're a longtime Canon user, can you explain this to me because I don't know what's going on here. I actually ended up using some profiles from the company Color Fidelity that I found from another photographer. Now these work pretty good in kind of ensuring some color consistency with the basically the look that you see on the back of the camera um, and in the kind of the default JPEG version. Again, maybe I'm missing something. The, the raw files just seem to take a little more fiddling to kind of get to the the right look that you want. What's your workflow like with um, your Canon setup? Out of the box, I've never had any complaints or frustrations working with the, the Nikon RAW files. Uh, they've always been fantastic. Um, the JPEG files are pretty darn, pretty darn good as well. Again, let me know your Canon workflow with as far as your raw files are concerned, because I'm a little stuck here. When thinking about video, I, it's not a it's not a deal breaker in my workflow, but I did record my first YouTube video on the, the Canon system, and I definitely enjoyed having the flip screen as a monitor. I also found that the, the Canon menu systems were a bit more complex for video. The Nikon video recording menus just, to me, were more intuitive. The biggest thing I noticed was I was struggling to find the right audio level menus. It's in there, but it was just harder to get to on the Canon system. So in conclusion, Migrating over to Canon was a lot easier than I thought it would be. The camera menu system didn't take long to pick up at all. Within a couple of weeks, I was pretty comfortable across the board using all functions of the camera. I've used the RF system now in all major aspects of my business. So I've used it for studio headshots, tethered volume sh headshots, and uh, outdoor location shoots as well. I'm a little surprised to say it, but I think I'm gonna stick with a Canon for a while. Unless Nikon really makes a comeback with the upcoming Z9, consider me a switcher. What's your take? Have you used both systems? Any preference? Let me know in the comments what you think and uh, if you've transitioned from one to the other and what your experiences were. That's it, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you'd like uh, more headshot tips and uh, these kind of style of gear reviews.